Hi, this is Christina Dubois Nugent coming to you with a discussion on risk graphs part two. How to read the actual risk graph. And in this particular example, we're going to be looking at a debit spread. So we're looking at a bull call spread. And right now it's a bit zoomed out. So what I'd like to do is zoom in a little bit and zoom in from, let's say, about 85 to about one. Uh, uh, I'll say 120. So from 85 to 120. So I'm actually going to use some of the tools underneath, which is under the risk graph settings, and I'm going to change that to 85 on the lower end, and I'll say 120 on the higher end, and then I'm just going to apply the settings to the risk graph. Um, again, I'll spend more time on the risk graph settings on a part three. But what I'm looking at is then you're looking at from left to right stock movement into the risk graph. Now it's still a bit zoomed out to be honest, but what I want to show you is that right now the stock that's closed at 104.12 and it shows what happened open, high, and low. That's more for reference sake. All you're seeing is the actual close price all the way through. You're probably wondering why I have these bands here. This is due to general settings. So another uh, a version that you'll need to want to look at is the general settings recording. If you want to have yours set to look like mine. Um, so what you're seeing and what I want you to notice is that based on where the stock is trading right now, it's actually existing in a very unique place on the risk graph. But, um, it is where time is basically not impacting the trade. The red, the blue, the green lines are all converging together. Now to zoom in a little bit closer to really see this, I'm going to go to 100 as a stock price to 110. Now when I do that, obviously I'm going to lose. If I get to 100, I'm going to lose all this data over on the left hand side as far as stock activity because I'm going to limit my view. So again, going down to the bottom, I'm going to 100 to 110, doing the same idea of hitting risk graph. And the reason why I spend time on a risk graph is because I want to understand what is my time impact, what is my volatility impact, what does the stock need to do in order for me to make money on the underlying stock. These are things that the risk graph tells me. There's a huge value of being able to read a risk graph. To me, a risk graph is the equivalent of having an instrument panel when you're driving. If you don't have an instrument panel that tells you how much gas you have left, how does the oil look, what's the speed I'm going in, am I in regular drive or in, am, am I in a different mode, um, you know, all those things affect the quality of my drive, the quality of me actually getting to my destination. So consider that as your risk graph um, equivalent and more. So here you have the stock trading at 104.12. That's where the stock is trading now. As you can see, the red, blue, green lines, you can't even see that. And that's where the buy leg and the sell leg are just about split down the middle. And it's real close. So the difference between 103 buy leg and the 105 sell leg is 104. And you can see we're just north of that. Therefore, that's what you're seeing here, where the buy and the sell leg are equally distanced from where the stock is trading. So the effect of time decay is basically zeroed out. As the stock gets closer to the sell leg, the option that you're selling then is decaying faster when it comes to time decay. The, and you're getting the benefit of time working for you, red, blue, green. So let's take a moment and talk about red, blue, green. What is that? Well, 10 days red line, in this case, the red line is 10 days to expiration. It's the day you put on the trade. So that's where we are today. So if the stock moved today from 104 to 105, I would be making, and I'm just going to hover the, the mouse here a little bit, a profit of $26 per position. Now remember, it costs us 109 for the position, so we're making about a 25% return. Now if the stock stayed at 105, is time actually working for me or against me? The blue line 
green line is different times of the risk graph and please note that it's always divided in thirds so when you first put on the trade it's 10 days if you take 10 divided by 3 it's roughly three days so you're seeing seven days to expiration four days to expiration and zero days to expiration as we move the counter to six days to expiration then you're gonna divide it in thirds you're gonna see six four two and zero that's what you're gonna see it's always a moving target so when it comes to setting your parameters of when to exit you're gonna decide that on the day that you put on the trade or as you're putting on the trade before you put on the trade you're going to set the parameters of this is when I'm going to exit the trade because of time that again is uh, another discussion of your trade plan and understanding how to set up your trade plan now when I go in and I see the stock moving higher you can see as it moves higher time is working for me anything past that center point that's usually again right between the buy and the sell leg on a debit spread is its time is actually working for me because the stock is now closer to the sell leg as we go p below that midpoint then the stock is actually closer to my buy leg which causes the heavier impact of time decay to be on the stock uh, that the option that I'm buying um, and therefore time is actually working against me so if the stock goes from 104 down to 103 right away the today timeline I'm losing thirty one dollars but if I let it sit there and do nothing then I'm gonna go to losing almost thirty eight dollars then going to the green line I'm, I'm looking to lose about fifty dollars and then you can see if you take it all the way to expiration you're gonna hit your maximum loss if you do nothing now what I want you to start paying t attention to is notice where time works for me and where time works against me also notice when is time the largest factor and it's always that last third so when you're looking to decide to exit a trade if you're losing it's really a smart idea to say you know what if I'm wrong by the time the green line when I first put on the trade occurs then I'm gonna get out so in this case if it hasn't done what I needed to do by 223 I'm exiting the trade because if it works against me that last third is has a much bigger impact than the first third or the second third now obviously the stock movement alone can be quite devastating and get you out on a money stop but what I want you to pay attention to is just the sheer distance between today and a third of the way through the trade and then from a third to two-thirds of the way through the trade and then the last third really critical and then when you're in the money realizing that waiting can often give you more reward potential but then you have to judge that against stock movement is the reward of waiting a day worth it in relations to stock movement against you and that's really where the Greeks come into play so we will also talk about Greeks and the impact of that as well now the other portion that I want to talk about is the second part of the risk graph which we don't spend a lot of time on but it's the volatility implied volatility of uh, that particular relationship of buying the call and selling the call and what it's showing me here is based on um, th its past history what we're looking at is where implied volatility is right now so it's telling you it's right at about 16 uh, 16 percent so that's what we're seeing here and what would happen if implied volatility goes up what would happen if implied vol volatility goes down and that's what I want you to pay attention to more than anything because it's again a pretty um, complicated conversation but at a minimum I want you to be able to look at this and say all right if implied volatility goes up from 16 let's say to 20 and it's been at 20 before even in the today timelines it's been at 20 what does that mean to me well if it happens right away from 16 to 20 I'm actually gonna make a little bit more profit based on implied volatility if it happens over time not only is time affecting the impact of implied volatility I'm losing a little because implied volatility <clears throat> is tied to time value so 
the less time you have, the less time value you have, and therefore you're going to see a loss in profit potential. But you can see that in all three examples, an increase in volatility actually positively impacts us. If volatility goes further down, let's say it goes down to 11, then you can see from today what implied volatility would have a negative effect. Not as much of an impact, but still negative for a, uh, a third of the way through the trade. And two-thirds of the way through the trade, it's basically irrelevant uh, of an impact um, on the trade. Now, I don't want to get into what happens if it goes way down there. Uh, stock movement would impact that too much. But I want you to understand how to read if volatility goes up, the angles, the direction that those um, lines are going. Different between debit spreads and credit spreads and ultimately butterflies as well. So that's part two on the risk graph. And the third part, we'll focus in on the bottom section here. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned.